Welcome back everyone to section number one. This is talking about the y direction, right? So if we wanted to integrate in this y direction, it turns out it's possible and there are good uses, good reasons why we would want to do such a thing. So those are our main objectives here, right? We want to identify when it is advantageous, right? When should we actually do this? When would we benefit from integrating with respect to y instead of with respect to x? And then of course, let's get a little bit more practice. Okay, so the remark here, if it's more convenient, you can think of x as a function of y. I know kind of all through our, our algebra days, we've been trained that y is always a function of x, right? We do this over and over again, but we can turn this on its head and kind of think about times where x is actually a function of y, and then we could actually integrate with respect to y instead of with respect to x. So kind of there's been plenty of times in you know calculus where we've integrated with respect to x. We've also done like integration with respect to u or with respect to t. Why not with respect to y? I mean, it's just a name. It's just a variable name here. So we can integrate with respect to y. And in that case, right, suppose we wanted to find actually the area between graphs. And those graphs, right, these functions that are bounding are actually functions of y. So instead of y as a function of x, we have x is a function of y. So here's maybe one function. Here's another function where x is a function of y. And now we are integrating between y values. So instead of x equals a and x equals b, these are now y values. So I'm integrating between y equals a and y equals b. And in that case, basically we're just substituting these things in to our area formula from last time, right? So it's gonna be the integral from a to b of the absolute value of f of y minus g of y dy. Okay, so at this point you say, that's nice and everything, but why? Who, who cares, right? Why do we need this thing? Integration with respect to x was going just fine. Why do you need to bring integration with respect to y into this? So the claim is, right, it actually does have its uses. And I have an example here for us to take a look at. So find the area enclosed by the line y equals x minus 1 and the parabola y squared equals 2x plus 6. So if we were to actually graph this, right, we could use the point plotting method and graph this by hand, but actually I've given us, you know, uh, it all graphed out for us on this Desmos calculator. So let's go ahead and take a look here. So here we are. We have a nice line, right? This red one right here is the y equals x minus 1. That's our straight line. And then we have this parabola, y squared equals 2x plus 6. So that's the blue one right here. Now, if I wanted to integrate this with respect to x to find the area, right? I have this kind of x shading thing right here. You can click on this. And the claim is we would have to break it up, right? And the claim is for this first region, maybe from x equals negative 3 to like negative 1 or something like this, right? The small function would be the bottom half of this parabola, right? So there's going to be maybe some square root here, and this is going to be the negative half. And then the top half, right, is going to be the top half <laughs> of the parabola. Right, so that's how, that's our big function here. And then after negative one, right, kind of as we continue, the big function stays the same. It's the top half of this parabola, so it's gonna have like the positive square root, right? Imagine if we solve this for y, right? Take the square root on both sides, we'd have a plus and a minus. So it'd be the top half here, this would be the big function, this would be our, this would be our f, and then the small function would be this line. And again, we can do this, but I don't particularly like integrating things with square roots. Those aren't usually very nice. We'd have to use probably a u substitution, all that sort of stuff. Plus, we have to break it up into these two intervals. That's not so great either. But the claim is, if you were to think about this now with respect to y, right? With respect to y, kind of we're integrating up, you know, x equals some function of y. And so when we're talking about a big function versus a small function, Right before it was kind of which one's on top versus which one's on bottom, right? We were talking about kind of y values, what were big y values versus what were big small y values. Now, if we're integrating with respect to y, we're thinking about x values. So we're thinking about which has bigger x values. So in this case, if we look at the same region here and we think about integrating with respect to y, well, we can actually do it in one foul swoop, right? We can just do it all at once because this line here, this red line, always has bigger x values on this interval than, right, the blue parabola, right? Those x values, they're farther to the left. They are smaller x values than the x values on this line. And so the claim is we can actually do this all in just one integral and there won't be any square roots. It's going to be much, much better than if we were to try to evaluate this by integrating with respect to x. 
Oh, all right, so that's a lot of talking about why we would want to do such a thing. We'll, of course, you know, kind of explain this again in class, uh, but let's go ahead and evaluate this out, right? Let's find this area enclosed. And so the idea here is that we want to get functions x equal, something x is equal to a function and it has y's in it. So for instance, if I was to take this line and solve x equals, I would get x equals y plus one. And likewise, if we were to take this parabola and solve x equals, we would get, let's see, 2x is equal to y squared minus six. So therefore x would equal to, let's see, one half y squared minus three. Notice another indication that integrating with respect to y is kind of the way to go, is that it's a lot easier to solve for x in this case than it is to solve for y. So for instance, I mean, this one's already solved for y, so that would be okay. But if you were to try to solve this one for y, right, we would have the square root on both sides. And so you would have the square root of 2x plus 6. But then when you take a square root, you'd have the plus and you'd have the minus, right? And so actually this means that there's two functions. And so it's harder to solve for y in this case because of the square root. It was easier to solve for x, right? There was no square root. We didn't have to break this up into two functions. So again, this is another indication, just looking from the equations. We don't even need the graph. Just looking from the equations, if it's easier to solve for x than it is to solve for y, maybe it's a good idea to integrate with respect to y. Okay, next up, let's go and find these bounds of integration, right? What should my a and my b be? Well, I mean, this kind of determines what's enclosed, right? We want to find the area enclosed by these lines and the parabola, right? The line and the parabola. So let's figure out where they cross. Again, kind of looking back at our picture here, we kind of start integrating and stop integrating where these functions cross. Again, we're looking for the y values in this case. So in order to figure out where these things cross, we're going to go ahead and set them equal to each other. So when does y plus 1 equal 1 half y squared minus 3? So in this case, let me go ahead and maybe multiply by 2 on both sides. So I get 2y plus 2 is equal to y squared minus 6. And now let me go ahead and rearrange, and I'm going to get y squared minus 2y minus 8 is equal to 0. Okay, now fingers crossed, let's hope this factors. And of course it does, so we get y minus 4 times y plus 2. So this says that these two equations, right, these functions, they cross each other when y is equal to 4 and when y is equal to negative 2. Now, of course, if we had the graph like we do in this case, we could, you know, just take a look. Yes, they cross at y equals negative 2 and at y equals 4. But imagine if this came up on a quiz or an exam, right, we would have to solve this out by hand. Okay, so the last thing is, let's set up our integral for area is going to be from negative 2 to 4. Again, these are y values. And I'm going to do the big function minus the small function. And again, let's pretend here that we don't have the graph. And I want to figure out which one of these yield bigger x values, right? Which ones are farther to the right? Well, let's just go ahead and choose a test value between negative 2 and 4 to plug into each one of these things. So for instance, if I was to plug in, I like 0. Right, zero is a nice one. So if I plug in the y value zero here, I would get x is equal to one. Versus if I was to plug in the y value zero here, I would get x is equal to negative three. So which one's the big one versus which one's the small one? Well, the line is the big function, right? It spits out bigger x values. So this is going to be y plus one minus the one half y squared minus three. And again, so long as you have a big function minus a small function, right, we really don't need those absolute values. This is like the first part uh, of our theorem last time, right? So long as you have a bigger function subtracting away a smaller function, the absolute values, right, it's always going to be positive. So the absolute value is not going to do anything. And again, because we have a graph, we can check, right? So if I go back to my graph, we can verify, again, the line has bigger x values, right? They're farther to the right than the parabola. The parabola has smaller x values. Again, kind of if we plugged in zero, you notice we got out one here and we got out negative three here. Right? So again, kind of this indicates the line is farther to the right than the parabola. Okay, now all that's left, right? This is the hard part. The setup's the difficult thing. Now at this point, we can go ahead and evaluate. So pause the video, take 30 seconds, evaluate this out, and we'll verify our answer. 
All right, and so again, we take an antiderivative here. Now with respect to y, so it's a little bit strange, but we get 1 half y squared plus y. I went ahead and distributed this negative here, so I got, let's see, 1 6 y cubed, and then plus 3y. We were evaluating from, let's see, negative 2 to 4, so I plug in 4, and then I plug in negative 2, and then we reduce down, and I believe we get the final answer of 18. All right, so that's our only example. The claim is, again, that this is faster than if you were to integrate with respect to x. But that might be a good kind of test for you to do, is to actually evaluate this out as an integral in terms of x. See that you get the right answer, but that it takes a lot more steps, and that the steps are more complicated. Again, you're going to have square roots, all that sort of stuff. So this is actually much faster. So again, if you have some time, I recommend you know trying to calculate this area out with respect to x. It is certainly possible, but again, it takes a little bit longer. So if we can get this method down, even though it may be a little bit more confusing to begin with, right? getting this method down will mean that we'll be able to solve these problems faster, and that we'll get them done, right? and we can do more problems on exams and things like this. All right, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys next time.